Hey folks, this is Abel James and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man where we talk about real food and real results. On today's episode, we're exploring one of the most underappreciated aspects of health, the air we breathe. Most health nuts pay attention to the quality and quantity of water we drink every day. And if you're listening to this or you've read The Wild Diet, at this point you probably care about the quality of your food. But why are we not equally concerned about the quality of the 11,000 liters of air that we breathe in every single day? In the past few years while we've been traveling around the world, I really learned to appreciate fresh air. And growing up in the middle of New Hampshire where fresh air is abundant, it was never really something that I thought about, but before doing this interview, I decided to look into a few of the stats behind air quality pollution and its effect on your health. And so I was surprised to learn that every single year, more than 8 million people worldwide die from air pollution, and the effects of air pollution definitely aren't new. It's something we've been struggling with for a long time. In 1952, the Great Smog of London killed more than 4,000 people from pollutants released by factories and fireplaces. A few years before that, in 1948, severe industrial air pollution created a deadly smog that asphyxiated 20 people in Denora, Pennsylvania, and made 7,000 more sick. But most people don't realize that indoor air is actually worse. It can be 10 times more polluted than ambient air, and we spend more than 90% of our time indoors. Air pollution can also have a devastating effect on children preventing the development of their lungs and brain. A new study looks at how unborn children exposed to high level of pollutants in car exhaust are five times more likely to develop an attention disorder by age nine. So it's actually linked to brain health as well. Air pollution can also accelerate aging. Procter & Gamble recently released a report indicating that polluted air can contain over 200 chemicals that age the skin. In a recent study on women's health, air pollution from city life added as much as 10% to perceived aging. So in this episode of Fat Burning Man, we'll show you a remarkable method a CEO and environmentalist from India uses to improve the quality of our air. And it's something you can do at home as well. But before we get to the show, I want to congratulate all of you out there who joined us in the Wild Diet 30-Day Challenge. We had more than 2,000 people from more than 20 countries join our challenge in the Fat Burning Tribe group online. Here's a success story I'd like to share with you that just came in from one of our tribe members, Ambriel. I wanted to share my progress after one month on the Wild Diet Challenge. I lost 17 pounds and several inches going from a tight size 18 to 20 to a size 14. I saw my IBS symptoms completely disappear as well as a constant abdominal pain that had plagued me for nearly three years. Skin redness and rashes that had bothered me for years disappeared. I was glowing. Congratulations. That is fantastic, Ambriel. Lisa says, a month in the Wild Diet and no workout, eight and a half pounds gone. Nicholas says, my blood pressure has dropped from 166 over 120 to 120 over 79. I'm more energetic. I've lost 22 pounds. I'm just amazed the difference a month can make. I'm the most stubborn binge eater around. If I can crave veggies and give up Diet Coke, so can you. Ambriel, Lisa, Nicholas, and everyone else there who joined us for the challenge, thank you so much for sharing your stories. It's definitely inspiring to see you getting so much progress with just 30 days. It shows you that when you get real food into your habits, when you build it into your life, it can have incredible effects. So if you're on the fence and you're you're out there and you're thinking about trying this way of eating and living with a wild lifestyle, then try joining us in the Fat Burning Tribe. We have thousands of members all over the world who have dropped fat shattered personal bests, all while eating some of the best meals they've ever tasted. Barbecue short ribs, green smoothies, chocolate, chicken parmesan, and chocolate cookies are just a few that you have to look forward to. Right now, you can join us for a discount at fatburningtribe.com. Once again, from any device, just type in fatburningtribe.com. Right now, to join us, we have a live Q&A coming up. We have new meal plans that we've added to the group. You guys are really going to like it. So for current members, there are a lot of things to, forward, to look forward to. And if you haven't yet joined us, then just go to fatburningtribe.com and join in on the fun. All right, on to the show with Kamo. You're about to learn how to reverse lung damage from air pollution, how to rewild your work environment, a simple trick to improve home and office air quality, how to oxygenate your brain to increase mental performance, and much more. Here comes the show. All right, folks. Kamal Meadle is an environmentalist and entrepreneur with a vision to reshape commercial building in India using principles of green architecture and sustainable upkeep. 
including an air cleaning system that involves massive banks of plants instead of massive banks of HVAC equipment. He also spoke about this innovation at the TED conference. He spoke about how to grow fresh air, which has been viewed by over two and a quarter million people. How's it going today? Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Morning your time. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you. It, you know, it's incredible that we can speak from across the world, actually see each other from across the world right now. But I'd love to start with your story, because about 23 years ago, you actually became allergic to New Delhi's air. You said your lung capacity was at 70 percent. So what happened and what were some of the symptoms that you noticed? Well, I was coughing all the time and uh, getting my lung function test done. Uh, doctors prescribed nebulizers and puffs and sprays of all kind, and uh, this continued. So finally, they told me that it would be best if I left Delhi, and uh, otherwise I would be in big trouble. So I didn't want to leave Delhi because I grew up here and uh, had all my friends here. So I asked and I said, can I do something to change the air, or at least the air which I breathe? Right. So can I have a large tent for myself in which I can live hmm. and sort of be away from the pollution and uh, sort of recuperate? So that was the mission. So I went and recruited a few uh, graduate students, and they started work, and they found that NASA was doing some work to put people on the moon. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, there was another organization, the Tata Energy Research Institute, now known as Terry. And uh, so I got air tested by them uh, over the 12 months uh, in all kinds of seasons at different levels, maybe at 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters, and mm -hmm. so on, indoor and outdoor. And in that study, we found that the benzene levels in Delhi was something like 1,600, 1,800 parts per million. Hmm. And anything over 30 is said to be carcinogenic. Yeah. And that seemed to be the problem for me. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I found plants doing this r and I found three plants, which mm -hmm. again are part of that TED Talk. So I won't get into the details, but briefly, they are areca palm, uh, mother-in-law's tongue, mm -hmm. And uh, the third one is money plant. And they are in India, at least, they are uh, available at very low prices. And we found that if you use the manure along with the plant, which has got cow dung and other kinds of manure, then there is a lot of fungus and bacteria mm -hmm. which comes out of these plants. So we found that you have to use a sterile media, something like vermiculture, Mm -hmm. uh, where the earthworms eat up the garbage and produce uh, uh, the, the fertilizer, call it, mm -hmm. or the soil. Or you use uh, hydroponics, no, you use media only, uh, simple pebbles with charcoal, etc., or cocoa peat, and, no, and water. So these are the two systems which, uh, which we use. And we found that by using these plants, uh, you could reduce the amount of CO2 in the air. And at the end, we found that in the building, after we got ourselves USGBC LEED Platinum certification as a retrofit for our building, which is now nearly 30 years old, uh, then we found that we could meet US ASHRAE standards, that's American Society for Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning. We could meet their standards and yet reduce energy consumption. That's incredible. So let's let's talk a little bit about the importance of this for health uh, and, and also for improving cognition, as it turns out. You, you forwarded me a study today that I found just fascinating. Can we talk a little bit about uh, the effects of the air that you breathe, either for better or worse, especially when you're indoors? Yeah. Generally, indoor air is about 10 times, 8 to 10 times more polluted than outside air mm -hmm. in, in general, in any building. Because you've got bacteria, fungus, you've got hair, skin. So it's important to, uh, what happens is you want to put an outside air, 
call it fresh air, inverted commas fresh air. You want to pump fresh air so that you dilute the inside air and you make it fresher because inside air is bad. So you're pumping in outside air to make it more diluted. That's generally the principle. Yeah. But in the outside air is much colder or warmer than the temperature which you want inside the building. Then there is a delta temperature. For example, if I speak in centigrade, uh, if it is freezing at zero degrees C, mm -hmm. and you would like, as per ASHRAE, you want to keep the temperature to not less than 20 degrees C. So you've got to heat the air by 20 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. You've got to heat outside air being pumped into the building by 20 degrees, you have to raise the temperature by 20 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. Now that requires energy, whether it's gas or electricity or whatever method you need to uh, use energy. But in case you want to, you reduce the amount of fresh air which you are pumping in, because you're cleaning up the air inside using plants, then the energy bill comes down yeah. drastically. Now what happens here is that if you're not able to pump outside air, uh, that means your CO2 levels will start rising mm -hmm. inside the building. And then what happens is that normally, uh, 2% of your body weight is your the size of the weight of your brain. Mm -hmm. But the brain takes up about 20% of the oxygen which you breathe. And hence, uh, once the CO2 levels rise, your brain gives a signal to slow down. Mm -hmm. So a fast chip, computer chip becomes a slow chip and you start reducing the energy which you are spending by way of your brain power. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes if you see large public places which are not properly ventilated and there's a speaker, uh, after five or, uh, or half an hour or 20 minutes of the speech, you start feeling drowsy yeah. and then it's coffee break time mm -hmm. and you drink caffeine and then the blood starts circulation because of the caffeine and you wake up and you're back to business. Right. So the similarly, uh, you want the CO2 levels to be as close to ambient levels uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you can bring them below ambient, still better. Now, where is the low CO2? It's generally up in the mountains mm -hmm. when there's, uh, there are a lot of trees and there's less, there are fewer people mm -hmm. and there are fewer buildings and there is uh, fewer fireplaces and so on and so forth. So in buildings, we find that um, if you wish to have a healthy building, A, you need to either grow oxygen inside the building. Mm -hmm. The only other place which I know where the CO2 levels are perhaps lower than ambient, like we have in our building in Delhi mm -hmm. at the Pahapur Business Center, uh, and people can experience it. We have a restaurant on the ground floor and people can walk in and experience this. And we have an online monitor showing the CO2 levels inside and outside. Very cool. So you can actually see that uh, the numbers are lower inside. Mm -hmm. And the only other place which I know of is perhaps uh, casinos in Las Vegas where they actually <laughs> pump oxygen. Right. Uh, so that you, you can drink a lot and you can keep awake all night. So this is absolutely fascinating. I think a lot of people don't realize that having plants in your house really it's an active uh, part of being healthier. And I think, you know, a lot of people, especially in offices, they'll have fake plants, which are releasing more VOCs and more chemicals into the atmosphere. Uh, but obviously, fake plants aren't great. There are some specifically that you mentioned mentioned earlier that can really help with breathing. But will any plants help? Should people just tend to try to bring a little bit more nature into their homes. What do you recommend for people just getting started with this? There is a NASA study out by Bill Wolverton, which lists out a very large number of plants. And the three plants which I found also are in his list. Mm -hmm. So the plants which I chose were, were those plants which uh, did their job better than others. Among the plants which I tested, 
and that is and there were so we did a detailed calculation of how many plants how high and so on and so forth so i got the numbers right for keeping you alive and healthy mm-hmm. uh, there are many other plants every plant produces oxygen and converts co2 into oxygen during the day but there are very few camp plants which do this call it chemical synthesis at night when mm-hmm. it's dark mm-hmm. and these are very few few plants there are not that many plants and mother in law's tongue is sansevieria that is that does it very very effectively and it's very hardy it's easy to maintain so from all perspectives uh, there are many other plants but these three three plants are inexpensive and they work so that's what i've been using for the last 20 years and i've not tried to find uh, new plants uh um, there was no real reason for doing it because mm-hmm. all the other plants are more expensive here and harder to maintain right so when you walk into your building or when you walk into a particular room can you describe what it looks like how many plants are there in office buildings we found that money plant seems to be the best plant for this purpose because it removes basically formaldehyde and formaldehyde in offices is high because of Uh, polish and carpets and and all the cleaning stuff and things but in our building we also make sure that we don't we use zero voc paints uh, lead free paints our carpet is zero voc carpet uh, they are green guard certified products which we use and even the cleaning the cleaning chemicals are green guard certified so that uh, we make sure that there are no volatile chemicals Uh, coming out from the the washing system or the paper towels are also such that they don't have formaldehyde and so on so we encourage that then we encourage people not to wear perfume really that's vocs but it's so interesting because you've you've set it up so intentionally and it seems like it's not just improving uh, the air for the people who are working there but also improving the habits right people really if if you want to focus on your health you shouldn't be eating at your desk anyway you should be intentionally living the healthiest life you can and that means being very focused and and doing one thing at a time focusing on your attention but i think for a lot of people who work in in office buildings now they're used to getting headaches brain fog and eye irritation but they might not realize that it is coming from the air itself uh so do you see your building as as a template that could basically be expanded and is the future of of green building Absolutely in fact my view is that green buildings certified green buildings like we are a USGBC lead platinum platinum building is like getting a high school degree hmm. and if you really want to do graduation then you got to get yourself certified for wellness USGBC now is doing a certification for well W E L L and that is that takes care of mind comfort fitness mm-hmm. light nourishment water and air and there are standards for each one of these so when you look at a holistic approach to life you make sure like bhutan which is a country measures gross national happiness right so how can you measure the gross national happiness or wellness or customers or clients mm-hmm. or occupants mm-hmm. and at the same time you make them more productive healthy and for the cfo you're saving money that's a winning winning combination and if you want people to work at their highest levels of productivity you need to to nurture an environment that makes sure that they're breathing the best air possible that they're eating the best food uh, but for people who still you know aren't aren't convinced that air matters so much would you mind going over a little bit of the data i know that uh i i believe it's 8 million people a year die from air pollution and and something like 4400 die in china every single day isn't that right that's right in fact i can speak of delhi delhi is now the world's most polluted city mm-hmm. now guess what the size of your lung is the surface area of your lungs it seems that it's small but it's not it's close it could be the size or close to the size of a tennis court for example wow. okay 
and all the capillaries, all the little tubes, mm -hmm. if you calculate all the surface area, it's huge. And this is how the lungs absorb the oxygen and pump it into your bloodstream. But what happens is uh, the bone marrow of the human being produces a chemical a substance called alveolar macrophage. And this, this particular substance is through your normal immunity system pumped into your bloodstream. And it grabs these PM2.5 particles and sticks them to your arteries on either side. So if you, if you are on mineral water diet mm -hmm. and no food, you can have blockages in your, in your arteries and need stents. And hence it's important for nations, for cities to bring them down. Yeah. So it's very important for families, especially children and elderly, to be able to make sure that your bedroom at least is sanitized, call it. It's the PM 2.5s come down, so you get a respite for that six or eight hours you sleep. Mm -hmm. And then you are ready to face the next day at work or out in the open. And hopefully the employer also does something and starts caring about your health. Mm -hmm. Got it. So we're, we're just about out of time. Uh, but before we go, would you mind telling people where they can find you and the exciting things you're working on now? Well, I'm in New Delhi and uh, operate out of Paharpur Business Center, mm -hmm. which is a 30 year old building, a six story building, about 59,200 square feet in size. And we've had over 200 companies, American companies, start up uh, operation here. And again, I'm available on Facebook, on Twitter, and uh, of course, um, you can share my email address with people if they wish to write to me. Morning. If they have particular questions, I'd be happy to have them answered. Perhaps not instantly, but I'll make sure that they're answered. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on. For anyone who hasn't seen it, please check out the TED Talk about how to grow clean air. It is absolutely fascinating. And thanks so much for joining us from across the world. It's, it's fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thanks again for listening to Fat Burning Man. Don't forget, before you go... Check out fatburningtribe.com. If you have a question for me that you want answered about how to improve your performance, what to eat for dinner, how to drop fat quickly, how to improve your overall health, or anything else, we answer all of your questions there. So quickly, you can get the first month for just $1 for a limited time. Check it out at fatburningtribe.com. All right, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you, and if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan and Facebook by typing in Abel James or FatBurningMan. Drop me a line anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com I'll give you a second to type it in fatburningman.com and you'll get all the show notes and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man better yet enter your best email at fatburningman.com sign up for my newsletter and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week.
And especially if you're an injured athlete or an injured person just from sitting in your chair all day, you need to invest in sleep. And that's going to create the balance not only in the mind, but in the body. So everything we work on or everything you work on with your clientele, if they're not playing those seeds in bed,